and welcome back to another video. We have the April Scroller Box today. If you do not know what Scroller Box is, it is a monthly art subscription box where you pay £16.95 for the box itself. Additional postage and packaging may apply. You receive a lot of different art supplies each month, a featured artist with their corresponding artwork, a zine that tells you a little bit about the supplies in the box, a bit about the featured artist and also features artwork from previous boxes um, when you upload it to social media. And there is also a scroller challenge, which you is either a word or phrase which you use the supplies in the box to create a piece of artwork. There is also a sweet in each box. Last month I did not receive my sweet, which boo um it was unfortunate but it must have just been left out by accident um and for every box you purchase a tree is planted which is always very nice so let's get into this box it's quite a light box this month um but we've been getting some very very good heavy boxes lately so it's to be suspected that we would eventually get something a little lighter so this colour is very interesting. I can see a pen poking out of this. So I'm going to poke that back in. Let's lift this out so we don't get too many spoilers. Oh, move that um, and put the box to one side. So I am going to just move the zine to one side until we have seen all the supplies. And let's have a look at this featured artwork straight off the bat. So this is a beautiful tiger drawing here. Now, it kind of looks like it could be watercolour or pastels. Maybe not watercolour, pastels or pencils or something like that. That's my guess. Beautiful piece of artwork. And here is a little bit about the featured artist, if you want to pause that and read. Um, they're born in Mexico City, um, 21 year old animation student. I'm not, well, I think it's Cecilia. I'm not going to pronounce the last name, so I don't offend. Um, but there are some socials at the bottom, which I will for sure be checking out. Now we have a little bit of toned paper. So I think pastels or pencils is definitely, definitely a good shout for this box. We also have this pencil crayon, uh, pencil crayon. This is also known as a pencil sharpener um, that has slipped out of this bag. So interesting there. I think maybe pencils is probably the, the more accurate guess there. Let's open this up and take these supplies out of this very noisy, rustling tissue paper. Okay, so it's a very small amount of supplies, but um, we could have some very good quality ones as well. So we have a vinyl sticker, which is matching the zine there, which is always very nice. I have a good stack of these now. Please suggest in the comments down below what you think I should do with them. I am very hesitant to stick these on any appliances or desks or anything like that, just because I've done that in the past and very much ruined certain things. Um, so I'd like a creative way of using these. I don't know whether we create a collage or something. Do let me know in the comments below. We have a little sweet here. It looks like a toffee, which I mean, I'm I'm always for a toffee. I think you can't go wrong with sucking on a toffee. Now, the supplies. Let's just flip this over so we can read. Let's look at the smaller supplies first. We have a Stedler metal double sharpener. That's just a standard sharpener. Um, never have enough sharpeners, I don't find. Um, so that's good. It's nice and weighty and hefty. We have a Factus P36 eraser interesting so this is a soft and flexible eraser fantastic for gently lifting pigment and graphite from paper without damaging the paper surface and is designed to work on a wide range of delicate surfaces including tracing papers and films oh lovely it's quite a soft eraser it's very bendy uh, so that's good next on the list we have the unipin extra fine brush pen oh a brush pen oh look at that very very fine Oh, exciting. I love the uni pin pens. I think they're brilliant. The pigment's always really, really nice. It's got um quite a chalky matte feel to the barrel, which feels very professional and very expensive. But I'm excited to try this really fine nib there. Um, let's talk about the paper quickly before we get into the main supply. We have some A5 toned drawing paper and we have 10 sheets of 115 GSM. So it's quite thin. Uh, is a very thin paper, um, but nice and toned. It'd be nice to work on something that's not white for a change. 
Okay, so last and but not least, we have the Derwent Chroma Flow pencils. So we have six of these um, in a variety of colours. Okay, so we have a lovely um, foliage green there. We have a basil green. Let me put these to one side so I'm not mixing up. Um, we have a raisin colour. Interesting. We have golden sun. We have a black. And we have white. White's an interesting one, but I guess on toned paper that's going to be coming very handy for highlights. Um, so let's read a little bit about the pencils um i'll hold this up so you can read with me these derwent chroma flow pencils guarantee bold vibrant and saturated color for any project these pencils are wax based offering a rich and creamy lay down specific especially rather designed to layer and blend in a smooth and velvety finish they are formulated with rich pigments that will show up not only on white papers but tone papers as well okay so i'm not going to read the rest of that um interesting so we've not had pencils for a little while actually so it's good that we've got those it's nice we have a sharpener it's nice we have a rubber and it's nice we have a pen I feel like we have a complete set of supplies there sometimes I always find something's a bit lacking um but this feels like we can do anything with it the only thing we're actually lacking which seems to be in every other box we've ever ever had is a drawing pencil so we're gonna have to sketch with one of these coloring pencils and see how that turns out we'll see how well they rub out and I will do some swatches now of the colours. Um, maybe we'll do one of our grid squat swatches so we can see how they blend and what colours overlay with what to make new colours um, and see how they react on this tone paper. So let's get into that and I will read some of the scroller tips. But in, before we get into that, let's actually flick through this zine. So this is the spread about all the supplies there. Um, so it's saying that you can layer the pencils. Um, which is good. The sweet treat is a Swizzles butterscotch. Oh, I love a butterscotch sweet. Um, okay, that's good. Um, then we have a little bit about the scroller artist. I always say pause and read this, but I don't know if it's actually a bit too small for you to read, especially if you're looking on your phone. Um, but I will be reading this off camera myself. We then have the scrawler tips, things to try, artist's advice and behind the artwork. I will read the artist's advice and things to try as we do some swatching in a second. And then the scrawler gallery. So this is artwork from two boxes prior to this one. Um, so it gives people a chance to do their artwork and submit it on social media, especially in countries that are going to get the box a little later than here in the UK. Um, but there's some there's always some beautiful artwork featured on here um a lot of these i already follow on instagram especially um nap trapped art here they are fantastic I highly recommend going to give them a follow um little e illustrations as well here on youtube um some beautiful beautiful artwork on here really really pretty very pretty um and then finally we have the scroller extra which is always on the last day which kind of tells you a little bit about the supply theme or something like this i don't think this is relating to the theme but it's about the color wheel which i feel color theory is always very good i mentioned in a previous video that i struggle with color theory somewhat and um, so i think things like this on the scroll extra is always really good and then it talks about earth day as well which we've just passed um which is nice so that's the scroll zine um and then lastly the scroller challenge is walk on the wild side so that is playing into my um wheelhouse really really well i love doing nature and animals and things like that so i think i will really enjoy doing this let's hope i get on well with these pencils and produce something really really nice um on that so let's get into swatching these i'll read those tips and artist advice and we will see what we can come up with for this video Right, so let's jump into the things to try segment of the scroller tips. 
Chroma Flow pencils are fantastic for blending and layering. As always, be sure to trial all the different blends and layers you can create. When creating a colour gradient, place your first colour down, tapering out the pigment towards where you would like to transition to a different colour. Then use your second colour over the top of your transition and blend into the second colour. You can continue to layer these colours until you have the desired effect and tones. Layering these pencils will blend the pigment together so you can create a seamless blend, plus you can create a wider colour range with your selection of pencils. These pencils are extremely smooth so they will lay down easily with very little texture. However, like most coloured pencils, you may be able to see some line strokes. To avoid this, try building the colour up in layers, changing the direction of your pencil strokes in each layer. Alternatively, if you do not want to, to want too much pigment build up, try using the pencils in a circular motion to lay the colours seamlessly. Burnishing is also a technique that will also help minimise any visible pencil strokes. You can do this by using a blending tool, a light coloured pencil or even your finger to create to gently blend the colours on the page. More pigment will be transferred to paper when, you, when more pressure is applied, so experiment with using different pressures with your pencils. Keep in mind that applying more pressure or adding more layers of the same colour will intensify the hue of the colour, but it will not darken the colour. If you want to darken a colour, you will need to lay a darker colour over it. You can also often lighten a colour by using a lighter coloured pencil over the top. Chroma Flow pencils are erasable, however you may not be able to lift the pigment completely if there is a lot on the page. This can also be a great technique for creating highlights and colour fades. When shading or covering large areas, hold your pencil sideways to shade with the broadest edge of the pencil lead. This will help keep your layers light, smooth and controlled. So those are the things to try that Scrawler have given us. Um, I think some of those are really, really handy tips, um, including the burnishing, which I will actually mention when I talk about the artwork a little bit soon. Um, I'm going to just summarise the artist's advice. Um, she kind of mentions that if you don't, don't be afraid of pressing hard on the paper and adding more pig pigment um, to get rid of some of the paper texture behind, which um, again, it's a great tip, it really is, and it, w it will work depending on what type of artwork you are trying to achieve. Um, but I, for one, kind of like that little pencil texture. Um, but I'll, I'll go into more of that once we get to that part of the, the actual artwork. So here, I am just sketching out. I did a light sketch so that I could erase it, um, because I'm obviously sketching with the black, the black pencil, um, and I didn't want to press on too hard. Um, at first so that I couldn't erase it and I you know then forever have this dark stain on my paper so I did a really light sketch and once I was happy with that I um, just went over it with a bit a bit more pressure um, to solidify those lines um, and then I actually just really lightly rubbed it out almost like I would with normal pencil when I do a sketch so that um, it was kind of just a faint line to show where I wanted to colour the areas um, and, and kind of the shape of, of the chameleon and um, so as you saw with my swatching I did a little colour chart and I was really happy with the colours I could achieve when you overlay some of these colours there's some beautiful beautiful shades that you can get just from those limited um, pencils and I immediately saw this chameleon reference and it was the perfect colours um, from those swatches that would match this chameleon perfectly and that's why I chose this. I was a bit daunted by the scales um, but in the end I actually didn't add too much scale detail. Um, I think that it didn't need it. I think the texture of the pencil and the paper really helped to create that scale texture without having to add that as much detail. Um, so here I'm just using my white pencil because I found in my swatching having the white down first really lightened the colour without smudging the colour, um, if that makes sense. And so I wanted to add down all the white highlights um, where there's a lot of light tints and bright um, highlights on the chameleon first. And then I went in with the colours to start darkening, start adding the green colours, the yellowy colours. Um, and in areas I did add that um, raisin colour, which is a really re red colour. I'm not sure I would class it as a raisin colour. Um, just to deepen, like the blacks turned out black, but I felt like adding the raisin to the blacks really deepened that colour and um, kind of just added a lot more depth to it um but these pencils are beautiful to work with i i actually have very much enjoyed them i don't have i don't think a lot of my pencils um colored pencils are not wax based 
Um, so I was kind of unfamiliar with using a wax based colour pencil but it, it was very nice to work with, I very much enjoyed it, they laid down really nicely. You did get the grain of the paper through um, the pencils um, but I felt like, especially in my scenario, it did aid in the chameleon um, but I think, so coming on to the burnishing like I mentioned, the, you can get rid of that texture by actually just pressing harder which is the artist's advice and that did work you're almost burnishing with the pencils and i think a blending stub would have worked just as well hence why you'd use a blending stub but um i think just using the pencils themselves really really worked like i say adding white over the top top would burnish them but also smudge and lighten um the colors and adding the black as a burnishing would also mute those colours as well so there was a lot of options there for burnishing and, and, and creating that um, creating less tooth to the paper and removing some of the paper colour coming through um, for me I think using tone paper is almost using an undercoat which um, I have a video coming up the next video you will see after this one is actually about painting with an undercoat um, and I find the tone paper acts almost like that undercoat you have that kind of colour that ties in um, all of the pencil shades together it creates a bit more depth it allow allows you to add that extra color without having that um, as a pencil um, shade so I think leaving some of that colored uh, paper through is actually beneficial in some ways um, certainly for this artwork that I did here um, but yeah my overall thoughts of these pencils is they're really nice the sharpener is beautiful it works beautifully like a sharpener I know that sounds like a weird thing to say but I've used sharpeners in the past that definitely do not sharpen correctly um, the rubber was lovely I, as you saw in my swatches you could rub out this pencil even after pressing on quite hard so um, that's a it's just a great um, rubber you can also use the rubber to burnish I did do that in a few areas um, very much helped um, and the brush pen, the um, uni pen, was beautiful to work with. I didn't use it as much as I thought I would. Um, I was going to go back in and add the scales with it, but I actually didn't want to add that extra texture almost. It's obviously when it dries, it kind of creates a bit of a shinier texture compared to the pencil. Um, so I just deepened like the eye socket and the mouth kind of gap there um, just to you know add a bit more depth in those areas but I didn't use it as much as I thought but it was beautiful when I tested it out it would be very come in very handy for scales and things like that so I definitely will be using that supply a little bit more um but I think that's all I have to say about the artwork actually it's it I, I enjoyed this box it, more than I thought I thought I was just gonna have one of these mediocre boxes but I'm happy with the artwork I'm happy with the supplies and it overall it's a very nice box so um yeah I'm pleased with it I'm very pleased with it but I think that's all I have in terms of commentary for this video I'm gonna let you finish watching the artwork and um, I hope you've enjoyed please hit that thumbs up if you have comment down below how you found the box or whether you're excited to receive the box um, and I hope to see you in the next video